Hello, Internet Barbarians. And welcome to the Lost Lands. Yeah, this is it. Turok 2. And we're going to play it. Now, I will talk a little bit about the game while we play. So let's just hop right in. Let's... Let, let's go normal. Greetings, Turok. I am Adon. The elders of the Lost Land, known as the Lazarus Concordance, have charged me with the task of guiding you on your quest to stop the Primogen. The Primogen seeks to destroy the five energy totems that keep him imprisoned within the wreckage of his light chip. If he succeeds in destroying all five energy totems, he will be free, and the blast wave of temporal energy unleashed will destroy your universe. You must stop the Primogen, Turok. Protect the energy totems at all costs. You will also be given additional mission objectives as you venture deeper into each of the worlds which you must explore. The Port of Adia. This once peaceful coastal village has been utterly destroyed by the Dinosaur Army under the Primogen's command. In the hills surrounding the city, the battle wages on and stragglers are hunted down ruthlessly. The dinosaurs are genetically engineered dinosaur hybrids. They are utterly evil and very dangerous. Though they do the Primogen's bidding, the dinosaurs have a more sinister and personal agenda of their own. To see humankind wiped from the face of the earth. Your mission objectives are as follows. Activate three distress beacons. Rescue four children. Activate the warp portals. Locate the energy totem and defend it at all costs. All right, we are in game. So if you're familiar, let's just jump first in the water and get some goodies here. But if you're familiar with the first part, um, you notice that this time around there's actually a backstory. Somewhat. I'm giving you at least some reason to explore all these levels and do the things you do. Your oxygen is low. Oh. And you actually get a warning when your oxygen is low, which is nice. And I, I really use to play this game as a kid a lot. I mean, really a lot. And in my opinion, this was one of the best shooters on the N64, hands down. Next to Perfect Dark and uh, obviously GoldenEye. Grab some stuff here. And yeah, th this here is the remastered version. Which you can find for PC and um, various other platforms. And just like the Turok 1 remaster, it also adds a few changes. Let's hop. And the jumping, I feel, in this remaster is a little bit more. more. And you actually have this kind of climbing mechanic. Similar to um, Doom 2006. 2016, sorry. <laughs> and as you heard in the cutscene, there are actually mission objectives. That we will have to um, accomplish. So there's a gun up here. But we will get to that shortly. Let's first collect this power cell and then return with that power cell distress we can activate activated. this distress beacon 
And you see there is this um, pop-up um, popping up, which tells you how many of the objectives you've been completing. And you can actually, in the options, let me just show you real quick. I think it's under gameplay. Uh, show hints. Yeah, it must be that. You can activate show hints and it will actually show you where you find your mission objectives. So if you get lost, you can activate it there. But I believe I've deactivated it at some point. I think it comes with those things activated standard. So no worries there. All right, let's jump over there. Pistol. Now we get a pistol. And yeah, this game on the N64 was graphically very, very impressive for its time. I have never had seen anything like this before on the system. And it's not just the graphics, it's, it's the sounds, it's the whole presentation. It made this game really feel cinematic. Yeah, thanks, man. It made the game really feel cinematic. Come on. I'm missing every shot. And of course, the gore and blood <laughs> and animations of these beasts. I mean, this was just top-notch for the system. And similar to the first part in the original Two Rock Dinosaur Hunter, this game also functions on a key hunt system. Come on, die. And you can see, you can also get your arrows back. The regular ones, at least. So it functions on a key hunt system. There are various keys scattered throughout the levels again. And you have to find them to unlock the other levels. But to accomplish the final goal of each level, you ha have to do all the objectives. Well, that was a nice one shot. Can grab down here some ammo. Oh, I guess we're full. Then just continue here. Open that thing, and now another reptile comes down. Come on! I was dodging. Give me that. And again, th this game played like nothing else on the system. And again, I'm I'm ready to die on the hill that the N64 controls for shooters were the best at its time. Especially for 2 Rock 2. Come on, climb. Flashlight. Just like the first part, these little silver health packs give you to health, but can extend your health above 100. Come on. I mean, the bow really gets more useful if you want to conserve ammo because um yeah you can get essentially most of your arrows back and a good shot can one shot all these guys and the overall improvements they made to the game it's it's just a superior one I mean, this is this is how you would do a sequel properly. 
child rescued. Thank you, Tara. Woo! So another objective done here. And let's just continue and jump down here. And there's another end trail. I think that's what they're called. Come on! No, don't... Damn it. Eh, I'm not feeling like going down and grabbing my arrows, so... <laughs> Alright, aiming for one guy, hitting the other. Eh, what the hell. Yeah, some more arrows. And I think I'm full of arrows again, yep. Alright. Next section, there will be two guys, one up here. <laughs> and one around the corner. And I'm killing it here. Now you hear these... Yeah, get, get your melee weapon ready. Come on! Come on, you annoying little... Sit biscuit! Come on! Yeah, these compies, they can be... a real pain in the ass. There was a secret here, or is a secret here, but I can't exactly remember. Um, it's been a while, guys, since I've played the game the last time, so bear with me if I have to run around in circles for a few times. Even though I fairly remember most of the game pretty well. Again, this was one of my favorites on the, on the N64. There was also a PC version back in the day, but uh, I just think the N64 one played a lot better. Ah. There should be a way to kind of maybe eh, or open this gate. And I mean... Look at that raptor here. They absolutely improved on the look, looks of the enemies, the character models, the weapons. They improved on everything since the first part. And this remastered version from Night Dive doesn't even really change that much in the game. Most, pretty much all of the levels are intact. Yeah, I got an ultra health. And also, just like in the first part, um, various health packs and these... Now they are more kind of squares. These yellow squares and red squares. In the first part they were triangles. But yeah, life crystals. Give me that back. Life crystals give you some extra lives. Come on. Ah, can't climb up there. There will be another guy. Yeah! <laughs> Thanks, now I know that this is a pistol. Can shoot these barrels and we'll drop down some loot. Neat. Oh yeah! And yeah, there is a full on dismemberment system.
I think also this was somewhere around the time where games like Soldier Fortune and uh, well, was there any other game that featured that much dismemberment? Yeah, but games like Soldier Fortune were I think also released at the roughly at the same time. And also the game I glitched. <laughs> Look at that. I glitched. Woohoo. Uh, I'm gonna lose health, aren't I? Yep. That's what I get for fooling around. Come on. Die. Woo. What the? I want to get up here, please. Oh yeah, right. Um, oh, totally forgot about that. First you have to go here, shoot that thing. Grab that power cell. And slot it in. Activated. So, two out of three beacons and one out of four children rescued. Yeah, the remaster improves, of course, some of the graphics, but it's mostly the lighting effects, which are still very true to the original. Shotgun. Yeah. Oh, come on. As I said, the lighting effects are still true to the original, but a little bit enhanced with the bloom. Come on, won't you die already? Man. The only th thing I feel like... Come on! The only thing I feel like... Um, the weapons feel a little bit less precise, but uh, that might be... Well, let, let's rephrase it. Maybe they are um, totally precise, but um, the N64 m version might have had some amounts of auto aim. Distress beacon activated. All right. Now you can shoot these hooks and grab some goodies. There's another one. Come on. Nah, not gonna bother with those. You know where they are, you can grab them yourself if you like to play this game also. Come on. <laughs> yeah, and just like the first game, this one also features a whole lot of weapons. I think even more than the original one. In general, this game is absolutely considered a gun porn. <laughs> scared me but you're not scaring me kablam 
hit that lever. Now this one is a portal and um, obviously and this functions as your save point. Greetings, Turok. How may I assist you? We can top up our ammo and our health, but um, it's only once per level, so you might not want to use it right away. Hmm, right. Yeah, I played some... Oh boy, 2017. <laughs> Let's save in this slot. Um... Right, you can save at any point now. Forgot about that. But in the original, this would function like a save point. Come on. Sometimes they're just bullet sponges. Pistol bullet ammo sponges. And they won't die! Get your shotgun ready. Stupid raptor! <laughs> and man, they went all out on these death animations here. Now you might be able to hear another kid. Just hit that lever and jump over here. Try to jump on top. Child there we go. Rescued. Another child rescued. Jump over here. Can grab some goodies. They even sort of react to the position where you shoot them. I mean, it's not the first game to pull it off. GoldenEye did it before. Oh, and here's another thing that got improved uh, compared to the original title. Goodbye. Um, if you hit the R button on the keyboard, you can now switch between ammo types. Which is pretty neat. The original certainly needed that sort of function. Right, we topped off an ammo for the bow. Ah, I always like this one here. Now, there is a secret behind that water fountain, water falling, water fountain me thing. You might think it may be that switch, and it is that switch. <laughs> now I, I already start to misremember things. Right, the secret was that. Ah, I'm a derp. Uh, there's just more ammo there. Some more arrows there. Right, the secret is another thing. And you would actually never really know that you should do that. And you see these birds, seagulls, or what they are. Steven Seagulls. And I think it's best to do it with a shotgun, but... I don't want to waste all my good shotgun ammo. And you can actually shoot them. And if you can... Come on! I don't think the... Or is it? I don't... I don't know if it's hit scan or not. But if you manage to shoot them all... Let's be sure that I didn't miss one. Then there will be this passage here that opens up. 
Who would have figured that out? Ultra and you can grab another ultra health here. And a whole bunch of red life crystals. Red life crystals? Over there you might be able to see some goodies. But I'll show you in a bit how to reach that. Alright, it's already dead! No! No! Grab some ammo here, grab some ammo there, and you see here another portal looking thing. And there's actually a switch right next to it. Warp portal activated. Now we can enter it and let's see what happens. This is a talisman chamber, a holy place that evil cannot enter. Activating the warp portals opens gateways to these ancient sanctuaries. Your quest will require you to locate five sacred talismans. The talismans will grant you immunity from certain types of danger and allow you access to new areas that must be explored. The spirits that watch over these chambers will require an offering of a mystical evil feather before a talisman can be secured. There are five talismans and five eagle feathers that must be found as your quest unfolds. All right. So finding these feathers, um, I, they are kind of scattered around throughout the level, along with these um, well, not this level, obviously. The other levels. And um, with these talisman chambers, uh, there is this kind of added extra mechanic um, where you need to hunt these down. And you will want to hunt these down because in each level uh, there are some certain segments that can only be accessed with um, these eagle feather powers from these talismans so you want to keep an eye out for those if you want to see the final boss now let's just return here yeah we're full on health anyway and I'm thinking I'm going to wrap this first episode up for now because these levels can tend to be quite a lengthy and uh, I don't want these videos to last for 10 hours or something. After all, this is a fast-paced shooter and you shouldn't sit through a whole hour of me running in circles, so... Anyways, guys, if you like this video, then please crush the like button. And if you want to support this channel, then the best thing you can do is subscribe and follow me on Rumble and spread the word about the Internet Barbarians. And I hope to see you guys next time. And as always, keep calm and crush your enemies. Crush your enemies, see them driven before you. Crush, 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 crush your enemies. They hear the lamentation of the women. Crush, 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 crush your enemies. They hear the lamentation of the women.